On October 15, 2012, the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front forged the historic framework agreement on the Bangsamoro. It will give birth to the new autonomous political entity called Bangsamoro. Since its signing, three out of the four annexes have already been signed by the parties. The Annex on Transitional Arrangements and Modalities, the Annex on Wealth Sharing, and most recently, the Annex on Power Sharing. There is only one more annex that is being crafted, the Annex on Normalization. After all the annexes have been completed and signed by both parties, the Transition Commission will then draft the Bangsamoro Basic Law, the enabling law that will create the new Bangsamoro government. The draft law needs to be submitted to Congress by May 2014. After Congress passes the Bangsamoro Basic Law, a referendum will be held in the proposed Bangsamoro territory. Elections in the Bangsamoro will be synchronized with the 2016 national elections. However, the Bangsamoro government will have a parliamentary system wherein people in the Bangsamoro territory will choose from various political parties and the parties that win the most seats in the legislative body shall elect the head of the Bangsamoro. After 15 years of negotiations, the peace process is moving on to what the parties describe as the imminent signing of the peace agreement. Three strategic actions are required for the smooth transition to the new political entity. First, advocating for the passage of the Bangsamoro Basic Law in Congress. Second, electoral reforms in the Bangsamoro. And third, post-war economic recovery. The first step in creating the new Bangsamoro is to pass the enabling law, which is the Bangsamoro Basic Law, as it is drafted by the Transition Commission. It might be good to revisit the lessons from the creation of the Autonomous Region of Muslim Mindanao, or ARMM, in 1989 through the passage of the Republic Act 6734, otherwise known as the Arm Organic Act. Following the signing of the peace agreement between the Philippine government and the Moro National Liberation Front, or MNLF, in 1996, Republic Act 1954 was passed by Congress in 2001, amending Republic Act 6734. Controversy had surrounded the passage of Republic Act 1954, which critics said did not faithfully adhere to the provisions of the final peace agreement. According to Father Eliseo Mercado, who wrote extensively on the issue, the MNLF had no participation in the crafting of the law. First, he saw the law as a unilateral act and an imposition of the Philippine government on the MNLF and their communities. Second, Republic Act 1954 was not the legislation of the 1996 final peace agreement as signed by the Philippine government and the MNLF. Congress made its own changes in the draft, even if it was not its place to do so, for it was the people in the ARMM who must decide to approve or reject the draft. Third, since the peace agreement already bound the entire Philippine government, the executive and the legislative, with both houses represented in the negotiations, the role of Congress was to pass a law that would provide the legal underpinning for the 1996 final peace agreement. Learning from these lessons, part of our strategic actions must be ensuring that Congress pass the Bangsamoro Basic Law that is in accordance with the letter and the spirit of the draft submitted by the Transition Commission. Since it will be the first time for them to have elections under a parliamentary form of government, it is critical that electoral reforms be in place to ensure that political parties will not be dominated by the traditional political elite, who are mostly men, and only by a few powerful and rich families in the region, and have more of the same politicians occupying seats in the new Bangsamoro parliament. Let's take a glance at electoral trends in the region. The present geographical areas of the present ARMM is composed of five provinces, Maguindanao, Lano del Sur, Sulu, Basilan, and Tawi-Tawi, and two cities, Marawi and Lamitan. ARMM has 113 municipalities, 2,470 barangays, and eight congressional districts. 
In 2013, there are 1,300,479 registered voters in ARMM. Traditional political clans have been dominating ARMM's political landscape for the past several years. The Mangundadatus in Maguindanao, the Adyongs in Lano del Sur, the Hatamans in Basilan, the Sahalis in Tawitawi, and the Tans in Sulu. If the new Bangsamoro Parliament is to truly reflect the diverse population in the region, then electoral reforms must be in place to ensure representation of the marginalized groups, including women, and provide equal opportunities to leaders who may not belong to traditional political and wealthy families. The four decades long armed conflict in the Bangsamoro region has cost not only the loss of countless lives, but also massive economic dislocation, poverty, and deprivation. The 2006 Human Development Index shows that seven of the ten poorest provinces are in Mindanao, and five of the poorest seven provinces are in ARMM, namely Sulu, Tawitawi, Maguindanao, Basilan, and Lano del Sur. Five of the ten provinces with the lowest life expectancies nationwide are in the ARMM, with Sulu being the lowest at 55.5 years. ARMM provinces, while among the poorest, also posted low levels of consumption inequality, with Sulu posting the lowest consumption inequality in the country. ARMM also had the second slowest growth nationwide and the slowest in Mindanao. It also contributed the least to the Mindanao economy. The high poverty situation is exacerbated by armed conflicts in certain areas. Most adversely affected are women and children whose health suffer from poor and unsafe living conditions. Maternal and infant mortality rates are especially high in ARMM, where there are only 16 out of every 100 women who have access to the services of health professionals. One in every four children is out of school in ARMM, often owing to the continuous displacement. Boys constitute the majority of the dropouts. Strategic actions for post-war economic recovery, therefore, must take these into consideration and push for more investments in women and girls. Old economic models have not reduced poverty levels in the region, so new models must be advocated that put more money in the hands of women, who, studies show, invest their income in goods and services that redound to the good of the family. Planning for peace requires coming up with new solutions to old problems. It cannot be more of the same. And for our actions to be strategic, it must break barriers, break new grounds, and break silences. Then and only then can we truly create a new Bangsamoro and a new Mindanao.